Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brendan Plays. Welcome to Total Extreme Wrestling. Today is the big one. It is WrestleMania. We are booking the biggest show of the year, WrestleMania. All four hours of it. It's going to be a long one. Um, the card's all set. We've been, you know, talking about the card for the last few episodes now, but it's all set. We are pretty much ready to go for the big one. Looking at our main eventers, let's have a look. It's the big deal right now. We need to make sure that they're all ready to go. Hulk Hogan, the 100 popularity. He's the most popular guy in the company right now. Killing it. Well, not killing it in the ring, but killing it popularity-wise. We don't even know if Hogan's going to be good in the ring. Because here's the fact. This will be Hulk Hogan's, dare I say, first singles match. First singles match in the WWF. It's the WrestleMania main event. What am I doing? But he does not wrestle on Raw. He only will wrestle on pay-per-view. So he is a part-timer. That's it. He's a part-time guy. Won't wrestle on Raw. Contractually, will not do it. Yes. So we had the, the we have to hope and pray that Hulk Hogan will deliver on the big dance. Um, I don't know if he will. 52 stamina? I don't know. I'm concerned. Steve Austin, though, hopefully will carry him. 90 pop. And the rest of our guys all around that 90 mark. The Rock, 92. No one really has... No one's really showing us the signs that they're going to be able to go all the way to 100 popularity, other than The Rock. He's the only one that I've got hope for. Austin's definitely capped. Everyone else is capped at 90, so unfortunately, that's where we're at. But hopefully, you never know, hopefully Steve, um, The Rock can get there, because Steve Austin can't, obviously. But uh, we're all ready. We are going to keep on booking. We need to get through another week's worth of shows. We're going to start things off with Sunday Night Heat. And as always, we'll try and salvage The Rock's career. What's an incident here? The Rock got everyone in a good mood when he set up a pancake station. All right, Rock. Well, look, Rock's got to do something because the entire locker room does not like him. Um, so there's got to be something, right? He's got to do something to try and fix this uh, this issue that he's got with um, the, the entire locker room, you know, because of Shawn Michaels. Um, so we'll go to The Rock, and I'm going to go with William Regal. Surely, yeah, William Regal, one of the nice guys in wrestling. Surely he and Rock can sort it out. No effect. Fantastic. Thank one. Thank you so much, Regal. Okay, uh, we're in the Mid-Atlantic region. That will work for us. Let's go ahead and book Sunday Night Heat. This Sunday Night Heat, let's take a look. The last heat before our WrestleMania, or our heat and WrestleMania combined. So we try to have a good one here. Rikishi... Grandmaster and Scotty Duhotty, too cool on the pre-show. Got the promo. Shane McMahon announces that Sable... Oh, we lost a bit of storyline here. Sable will be the special guest referee for his match at WrestleMania. Okay, good. Ultimate Warrior had a 66 with Vampiro. How did Vampiro do the same performance as Warrior? Warrior, 73 pop. Vampiro, 50 pop. Same performance. Visibly tiring and turns it. And seven and a half minute match. Well, he can't even do seven and a half. Visibly tiring towards the end. You're a joke, Warrior. Steve Austin cutting a promo and Hulk Hogan advancing his storyline with him cutting. Yeah, just simple cutting a promo, talking about why he hates Hulk Hogan. The Acolytes took on the Hardy Boys for an 81 rated match. Pretty good. Bradshaw, 79. Farouk, 78. Oh, wow, the Hardys. 74. Well, Matt Hardy outperforming Jeff Hardy. You don't see that very often. Um, 74 and 72. Even Sonny and Jim Cornette have good chemistry calling the match together. That's cool. So an 81 rated match. That will advance and gain storyline heat for the Acolytes and Pimp Nation. Very good. And the Acolytes picked up the victory. Arja Kong and Bull Nakano. Cutting a promo on Toyota. Gaining some storyline heat. Thank God we needed that. Main event. Yeah, we're going to lose some heat here with our two storylines here. We, re we realized that, but it was a, you know, it was a good match. Billy Gunn, 75. Road Dog 79. X-Park, 84. Wow, 84 from X-Park. Taka, 62. Um, Owen Hart, 87. And Jeff Jarrett, 80. And we gave the victory to Owen Hart. And that will give us a 78-rated show. And I had a feeling we didn't use any women on our show. Yeah. Had a bit of a feeling. But that's okay. You know, it is what it is. All right. Um, Nitro. Oh, they, they had their pay-per-view. WCW Uncensored. Let's take a look. 
87 rated show, 30,000 attendance. That's good, a sellout. 0.6 buy rate. And Rick Steiner, the dream is still alive. He defeated DDP in the main event to keep the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Scott Hall defeated Lex Luger for 94. Wow, 94 for Lex Luger? Scott Hall must be really freaking good in this save. Uh, Kurt Hanning defeated Low D. Kidman beat Corporal Kajun. Ray Trailer defeated Steve McMichael. Oh boy. Ahmed Johnson beat Sick Boy. This is starting to get really dark and sour now. Mike Sanders beat Luis Bacoli. Oh god. The Boogie Knights to beat Treat Team Brilliance. Steve Malenko. There we go. Defeated Riggs. Um, no Goldberg. No Sting, no all the rest. They're all in angles. They're not wrestling. Why are they not wrestling? Where's Bret Hart in the match? Well, Uncensored was still a good show. That really only had, well, two good matches in the cards. So, I mean, that's all we ever have. So, you can't complain. So, this is Raw is War. We've got uh, the last show before WrestleMania. Let's take a look. Sable, Marlena, and Sunny on the pre-show. They're giving their predictions for Archer versus Toyota as a way to get them on the show so we don't get penalized on having women on the card. 61. Hibusa took on Gangrel for 55. Hibusa 51. Gangrel 52. Okay, nice match. Good stuff between both guys. Wild brawl match as well, so it kind of suited both guys' uh, styles, I would say. 55. We opened up the show with Shawn Michaels and Owen Hart. 83. Can you believe it? Owen Hart, 87. Shawn Michaels. 93, oh my god, what a joke, what a joke, um, yeah, so, Owen Hart won, with, uh, after the distraction by Triple H, and, uh, yeah, this, uh, this match sucked, wow, look, it was face to face, we tried to go as well, uh, Owen Hart can't deal with the pressure of going all out, apparently, yeah, Owen Hart can't go all out, sure, um, and Triple H's announcing work sucked too, but that shouldn't matter too much. But, um, yeah, okay. No good. After the match, though, we had uh, Triple H and the rest of the D of DX trying to attack Shawn Michaels, but uh, Owen Hart, Double J, and Shawn Michaels put their differences aside as they tried to fend off an ambushing DX. 92. Toyota defeated Akira for 62. Toyota 60, Akira 48. She was beaten down after the match, though, by Aja Kong and Bull Nakano. So, Aja and Bull looking very good. It's, of course, going to be all about Aja, not quite so much Bull, but uh, Toyota looking like the ult ultimate underdog right now. We had The Rock interrupting the Ministry of Darkness and roasting each and every member of the group. They were pissed off. They're looking to chase him backstage in the locker room, trying to find him, get their hands on him. It's a hundred rated segment. Kurt Angle, The Big Show. Kurt Angle, 88. The Big Show, 79. 82 rated matchup. So, yeah, not too bad, but um, obviously would have hoped uh, a little bit more for that. Um, yep. Then we had uh, The Rock, Mankind, Kane. Okay, so we had The Rock backstage, Ministry. They all were trying to find The Rock. When uh, The Rock lured them into a room backstage of Mankind, they had weapons in there, they were ready to go, they had this planned out, and they uh, started beating down the Ministry of Darkness. It's set up for a match later on, though, between Mankind and uh, Undertaker, but before we got there, we had Triple H cutting a promo on Shawn Michaels, just an 89, though. Okay, you thought that'd be better. He promised to send Shawn Michaels down south after WrestleMania, so goodbye, Shawn, you're going down south. Main event. All right, so there we go. Finally, something went right. Mankind and The Undertaker had a 99-rated match. Mankind, 99. The Undertaker, 97. And uh, it was a draw. After a double DQ, we had um, Kane attack Mankind. The Rock attack The Undertaker. And it was just all-out chaos. Okay, so all-out chaos between the two groups there. Well, we tried to make this show good. We tried to have Owen Hart and Shawn Michaels be a great match. It bombed. We had Kurt Angle Big Show. It bombed. So at least we had something, something good here. Um, 99. Last but not least, Hulk Hogan and Steve Austin. Face to face, no corporation. And of course, 
it was a brawl. These two guys just fighting and beating the crap out of each other. Security tried to break it up. Police tried to break it up. Referees are out there. Nobody could stop these two. Eventually, they were finally pulled apart by the locker room coming out to, uh, to, to assist and to stop it. So a huge brawl. Probably got pretty bloody, I would say. Austin and Hogan as a way for their final interaction before WrestleMania for 100 rated. And it gives us a 95 rated show. So our go home show in the end was was pretty strong, uh, despite the fact that we had a few blemishes along the way. Sunday Night Heat, the last heat before WrestleMania. Our last chance to gain some storyline heat. Can we do it? Let's find out. On the pre-show, we're going to test out Brian Pillman and Jake Roberts. They had a 54 rated match. Jake with a very good for his gimmick. And he was off his game. Brian Pillman, 59. Okay. Brian Pillman, 47 pop. Performed at 59. Now, keep in mind, five minute match. Five minute match. We gave the win to Jake. Um, but Jake Roberts, 42. Brian Pillman needs to change gimmick. So let's pray that we get better than the awful above average yes loose cannon as well above average thank you we gave jake the win because obviously um jake's got way more pop and um you know it's a pre-show match it doesn't really matter who wins um so pillman was good i'm happy with that pillman now has a good gimmick so keep in mind he got a 59 with an awful rated gimmick so there's a chance that he might go from 59 to 63, 64, now that he's got above average. So I think the new Brian Pillman might actually be a good Brian Pillman. We, after a year of waiting, over a year and a half of this save, we may have finally fixed Brian Pillman. It's taken a long damn time. We've had to wait. But we may have finally fixed Brian Pillman. Fingers crossed. 54. We open up the show, thank God, with a good segment. About time. DX cutting a promo on their opponents. Taka, Owen Hart, Jeff Jarrett, WrestleMania, their opponents. All right, Triple H and Sean, X-Pac and Taka, and the Owen and New Age Outlaws feud. All gaining heat, so all three gaining heat. Thank God for that. Because we've screwed up the last few weeks with, the, with this feud. It's lost a bit of heat. This one was a good promo. Getting us back on track. Too cool. They took on Richards and the Gold Noddies for 65. Um, like I said, Golga and Marlena. Excellent chemistry. Very exciting to see that. Rikishi 53, Scotty 47, Grandmaster 59, Richards 48, Golga 50, and Goldust 73. We gave the victory to the Gold Noddies, obviously with um, Goldust having you know 65, 63 pop, whatever he's got. You don't really want to ha have him losing at all to guys with 40 pops so pretty simple winner there 65 overall match Mero and Sable cut a promo on Shane and again we lost some heat Ugh. we need to bring in Vince we need to have an outside guy to help get some heat for this one because Mark Mero, Sable and Shane just can't quite get anything happening um, so we have Vince maybe talk to Shane about his match tonight maybe Rick Rude Ted DiBiase giving him some pointers something to try and get this storyline heat up because at the moment it's getting worse and it's dropping up by the minute. Every time we do anything, it's dropping. So Sable and Mero believe that their jobs will be safe after tonight. So Mark Mero, now that Sable's the special guest referee, he believes he's all going to be safe. It's all going to work out. Sable's going to help him win. He's going to be okay. All right, so putting Pimp Nation on here worked out okay. It didn't help our storyline heat, but it didn't bring it down. Um, so we had Pimp Nation out there cutting a promo on the Acolytes. So, overall, pretty good. My Gennetti lost a quick match to Gangrel. They have no chemistry. So a bit of a lackluster match. 45 for everybody. And we gave the, w the win to Gangrel because uh, Gennetti's going to be leaving the company soon and Gangrel needs some wins. Ken Shamrock getting it done. Great promo on Kurt Angle. Who, who would think that Ken Shamrock would cut a good promo? But apparently he does. 97. Helping get his storyline back on track with Angle. And our main event, wow, pretty good. 79. So we had Hardy Boys, Headbangers, Edge of Christian, and Lost Brickers. Fatal 4-way tag team match. A little fun little matchup here to get us ready for Mania. 
Hardy Boys, 74 for Matt. Jeff Hardy, how does he do it? 79. The dude's got 50 pop. Mosh, 54. Thrasher, 54. Christian, 71. Edge, 75. Miguel, 52. And Savio, wow, 66. Great match, 79. Um, apparently, apparently they're connected somehow. Owen Hart, Double J, New Age Outlaws. Really? I must have had one of these teams in that storyline. Shit. I did not expect that. That's probably why the match got as good as it did, because there was a, a storyline involved. Oh. Well, that, that's, uh, that screwed that up, didn't it? Well, 82 for our overall heat. And now we go ahead and we get ready to book the big one. It's WrestleMania time. All right, Rocky. I forgot to do it for heat, so can we fix The Rock? Um, the Rock and... I'm going to go The Rock and Big Show. I've tried it once before. I think it failed. Maybe I'll try someone else. We've got to fix The Rock and Mankind. It's just not right that they don't like each other. So please, Rock and Mankind. Yes! It's working! We're getting there! This is WrestleMania 15! I hope to God it is good! Let's see it. Alright, we start off with a battle royal. A 20-man battle royal. Big Show picked up the victory. Of course he did. Um, a quick little win for the Big Show. And 67 um, match actually wasn't that bad. We had the women of the WWF all being interviewed by Michael Cole, giving their predictions on the show, aka getting them on the card. And our first match, Kurt Angle and Ken Shamrock. It is a submission match. It's a technical-based match. It's going to open WrestleMania straight off the bat. And we're hoping that it's a good one. Um, I'm confident. I think uh, Angle will deliver, maybe an 86. Shamrock, hopefully 93. So I'm going to say a 92-rated one for this one. So let's see it. Shamrock and Angle. 91. Okay. We're close. Lack of psychology, really? Angle and Shamrock lack psychology? Okay. Well, anyways, 91. I'm very happy with that. I, that was... I was probably expecting high 80s originally, but, you know, if we could get a 90, I was pretty happy, and we did. So 91. That's a great start to WrestleMania. Very, very good. Happy with that. Kurt Angle members got 80 pop. Shamrock uh, has got 86, so not the most popular guys in the company, but um, definitely two very, two very valuable guys. Next match is Pimp Nation versus the Acolytes. All right, and before that, we had a WrestleMania vignette. Oh, we lost heat. We lost heat for everything. Well, that is not good. 89, that could really affect our WrestleMania. Hmm. Uh, we've got a few segments later on the show, but they won't directly help the heat, so I'm just going to have to hope. Hope that uh, it doesn't affect it too much. Pip Nation, the Acolytes, you guys are thinking mid 70s, low 70s, high 70s, okay. Uh, my prediction, Pimp Nation, um, probably bang out 63 together, and then I'd say the Acolytes around the 80 mark, so I'm going to go 73. So let's have a look. Wow. Okay. 80 for this one. 80 rated. Uh, Godfather, 64. D'Lo, 52. Farouk, 81. Bradshaw, 76 for an 80 rated match. Bueller and Dealer have no chemistry at all. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I take that off. I think I learned that once, but I thought I tried doing it again because I'm an idiot. Uh, it was only a 10-minute match as well, 11-minute match. We tried having this as a wild brawl, wanting both teams to go all out. And that did a hell of a lot better than I ever expected. So that's that's another strong match. X-Park and Taka Michinoku is the next one coming up. Before that, though, things get getting a little bit crazy. Stevie Richards wins the Hardcore Championship. So Stevie Richards is out back, and Anita, our special guest, he's the Hardcore Champion, was uh, summoned to be here tonight. He's walking into the arena. Stevie Richards was actually rumbling through the trash. He was going through the trash can. He saw Anita walking in. He saw that flashy Hardcore title and said, you know what? I want that title. He beat down Anita, grabbed it off him after winning it and uh, he walked away so Richards became the new hardcore champion 
by um, beating a Anita who's probably dressed in a suit, looking all fresh. Got his uh, got his suitcase with him. He's just trying to walk into the arena. Got the Tyler, you know, in his hands. See, Richards takes it away from him. X Park, great promo heading into his match with Taka Michinoku. All right, so you guys are thinking around the 80 mark, high 80s, mid 80s, low 80s. Yeah, I need it on a suit. Yeah, right. I know, but um, um, okay. So Taka and and, and X Park, it's gonna have to be a real carry job from X Park to make this great. Obviously, Taka Michinoku probably will perform 63 ish. X Park, you never know. He might get 85. So I'm gonna say 79 for this one. The storyline hits pretty good though. So actually, 83. All right, let's take a look. X Park and Taka, 80. Well, there we go. High, high 80s for X Park. 88 from X Park. That is unbelievable. Taka, 64. And that is the end of Taka Michinoku's reign as the lightweight champion. X Park wins it. He is the new champion, finally. X Park and Taka putting on an 80 rated match. Very good. Very, very good. Happy with that. Um, you know, considering. The, our alternative for the lightweights was probably going to be like, what, 65? The fact that we can get X Park in here and carry big time is great. And obviously, being lightweight champion, he's the right man for the job. Shane McMahon will take on Mark Mera in our next match. Before that, though, the corporation giving Shane O'Mac a bit of advice. Gaining heat. Thank God. Finally, something going our way. Getting them all on the card, too. Um, so, Shane McMahon and Mark Mera, this storyline is that if Mark Mera... Well, Shane McMahon believes there's no value in Mark Mera and Sable. He doesn't have. He believes there's not enough ro room on the roster for both of them. There's only room for one, and he wants to decide who's the most valuable. Well, Mark Mera said, "Don't even think about firing Sable. It's just worry about me. If I lose to you in a match at WrestleMania, you can fire me." And um, you know, Mark Mera is trying to keep his job, trying to fight for himself and Sable, but in the end. Well, things don't quite go the way for Mark Mero. Let's take a look. You guys think in mid-60s, uh, Mark is not very good. Neither is Shane. So I'm going to say 64. So, 62. Yeah. Mark Mero, though, had a 61 rate of performance. That's the best I've ever seen him do. So I will give credit to Mark Mero there. He normally performs, what, 55s? Maybe 57? He had a 61, and I will give mad props to Mark Mero. That is six above his pop. That's a great performance from him. Well done. 62 overall for the match. We knew it wasn't going to be great, but Shane McMahon won after a fast count. Sable, of course, was the special guest referee. Sable screwed over Mark Mero, did a fast count. Shane O'Mac won, and Mark Mero can't believe his eyes. Sable turn on Mark Mero and gave Shane McMahon a big kiss right in front of Mark. And so that kind of shows that maybe Sable's going to leave Mark Mero for Shane McMahon. She's gone corporate. She's turned on Mark Mero. Betrayed him. And poor old Mark fought for everything he had. He fought to try and keep his job so he could provide for Sable and himself. And in the end, Sable, she sold out. She went straight to Shane McMahon the moment she could. She realized that Mark Mero is probably going to lose this one, and she sold out to get... We'll go with the, the boss's son, really. Sold out for that money. All right, next match will be Kane and Mankind in what will be a fake Inferno match, but uh, meant to be an Inferno match. All right, um, next up, with, uh, we have another crazy little segment with this hardcore thing. This is great. Ted DiBiase's backstage with... Stevie Richards, and Stevie Richards is looking to pawn the hardcore title. Everybody's got a price. Stevie Stevie Richards pawns the title to Ted DiBiase for a hundred bucks. Here you go. And Ted DiBiase pulls out probably a five grand stack and says, um, yeah, you have one of these. And Stevie Richards, he's homeless. Let's not forget, he's poor, he's homeless. He's just trying to fight for a living. And, well, he sells the hardcore title to Ted DiBiase, who's now the hardcore champion. Like, I don't know, but there you go. Ted Biasi, <laughs> Ted Biasi gets the the the, uh, the win. Next now is Kane and Mankind. Um, you guys thinking low nineties? Hmm. Look, Mankind's been really good. Kane, very good as well. 
The storyline hit should be good. We did have a little bit of a drop earlier on, but I'm still hopeful. Um, I'm going to say... I'm going to say 93. Mankind and Kane. Let's have a look. Mankind and Kane, one-on-one. -on -one. 100! What? We did it! A hundred rated match! Mankind and Kane, bang! What? <laughs> well, Mankind did take a crazy bump. So that will, of course, increase it. Now, keep the other thing in mind is that we did pay for a little bit extra uh, for special set, special in ring. So when you pay for a little bit extra set, it can increase the match quality that little bit more. So it's possible that a 99 rated match might just go to 100 with that in mind. Not sure if that's 100% true, but, but um, it's possible. But Mankind took a crazy bump. He had a 92, Kane had an 87. So realistically, you wouldn't give this a 100 rated. But um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't book the shows. I don't, well, I, book the, I don't mark the shows. I don't get the results. So the non-Inferno match it was technically a no DQ match. It was meant to be Inferno, but quite work out to be the case uh, but we gave the win to Kane who uh, well he by lighting mankind on fire it happened don't even and no it was an inferno match inferno don't, don't this TW doesn't lie okay and then we had mankind He's, you know, Kane lit him on fire. Mankind screaming in pain as that happens. So there we go. Owen Hart and Double J versus the New Age Outlaws for the tag team titles. Okay. So we had Owen Hart and Double J with a promo before that. Gaining heat. Good. Okay. That's very good. Gets that last little bit extra out of it. Well, this is the best tag team match we can produce. Owen Hart and Double J are a great team together. Quite possibly could hit high 80s. And the New Edge Outlaws should hit low 80s. Um, if the storyline hits around mid, mid 80s, we'd have to think it's got to be around 86 rated match. So I'm going to say 86 for my prediction. You guys are thinking around about the same high 80s, mid, to, mid 80s. Okay, very good. So we're on the same wavelength here. Let's have a look. Owen Hart, Double J, looking to win the tag team titles from the New Age Outlaws. Okay, 85, so just a touch off. The New Age Outlaws performed better than I thought, though, so you'd have to say this match was a bit of a failure because, well, Jeff Jarrett, 88, Owen Hart, 92, Road Dog 92, what the f... Billy Gunn, 89, but yet only an 85 rated match. So what? where did we go wrong? Low storyline heat. So, despite the fact that we probably had, what, 85, 84 storyline heat, not quite good enough to drag it up to that 90 plus area, which is what that it had the potential to be. So we could do a rematch between these two teams, get the storyline heat, try and get into the 90s. This match could be really anything in the next time we do it. So, very good. Owen Hart and Double J do win the tag team titles though, ending the big long reign from the New Age Outlaws. It, all good things have to come to an end, and that was the New Age Outlaws' end of their tag team title reign. Arja Kong and Toyota is up next. We don't have another segment in between, so it's going to be right up next. So get your predictions in. Uh, look, Arja Kong's been great. Toyota's been really good as well. Uh, I'd like to think that they can hit a 70. I'd like to think that the women can produce a nice match here. Uh, but I'm going to probably say 68, just to be a little conservative. But I'd like to say 70. Really would like to see it. But I'm going to say 68. So Arja and Toyota, the women's title on the line. 66. Okay. Arja 65. Toyota 62. Just didn't quite have enough storyline heat to drag it up that little bit further. But look, it still was a nice match. Toyota has ended the reign of Arja Kong. Finally, Arja Kong has dominated. She's beaten everybody, except for Ivory, apparently. Um, she's dominated and... Uh, Finally, her reign comes to an end. She's been champion since August, and Toyota's taken a beating of a lifetime over and over and over. Well, look, we had no faults in the match. We did everything we could have done for it. There was no negatives. It was just the best you could get out of what we had. So, I'm happy with that. 
So let's hope that a good match between these two and Pateview will help. I know RJ Kong is probably going to drop a little bit, but I hope not too bad. Afterwards, though, Toyota had a nice little celebration for 67, so that might help. You know, a strong segment on Pateview always helps big time. Okay, Shawn Michaels' last WrestleMania. He'll face Triple H one-on-one. -on -one. 89 again for the hype video. We just can't quite... This match has just lost so much steam. Everything involving Shawn Michaels just has not been good since he signed that contract. He obviously doesn't give a shit anymore. Well, the fans don't care anymore, either or. They know Shawn's leaving, so they just had enough of him. Not sure. But, um, okay. Shawn Michaels and Triple H, I would like to say it's going to be 100. I would love to see it, but more than likely, it won't be. Um, I would say, honestly, I thought this was going to be the match of the night couple of months ago when we made it before we were going to get rid of Shawn Michaels uh, but now I'll be happy to see it hit 90 to be honest with you the way this storyline heat's going I don't know 93 I would be nice so Shawn Michaels Triple H one on one wow Shawn Michaels and Triple H delivered 98. Both guys hit 98, and obviously the storyline heat being so shit was the only reason why that stopped this match from being a 99 to 100. If we had just been able to keep that storyline heat high, this could have been anything. Shawn Michaels took a crazy bump during the match. For night, um, both guys hit 98. They have great chemistry, and Triple H beat Shawn squeaky clean. One well in an I quit match. Shawn saying the words I quit on Wrestlemania there you go and he does quit he's done the Shawn Michaels takes the L okay next match is one of our other big ones the Undertaker versus The Rock let's hope that this is good let's hope this is good Pip Nation um, we've got a little segment with them first Alright, uh, Sean doesn't want to be in brawl based matches. Well, I don't care, Sean. Pip Nation are backstage, and they convinced Ted DiBiase to give them the hardcore title in exchange for their services. So, Ted DiBiase, he's looking for a good time. We've got Alicia Webb, their new girl, their new girl for the night. Um, Ted DiBiase says, you know what? I'm going to take that offer. I don't need to be hardcore champion. I'm 45 years old. I don't need this belt. Here, Val, you take the title. I'm going to have myself a good time. Um, so Pimp Nation able to bribe Val Venus. I mean, maybe uh, maybe Ted DiBiase has a price. May not be dollars, <laughs> but uh, a good-looking woman might be good enough for Ted DiBiase to change his mind about being hardcore champion. Um, okay, and uh, now time for the Rock and Undertaker. So you guys thinking high nineties? I God, I hope so. I God, I hope so, man. So we had a hype. Oh no. Okay, well, I accidentally kept them on screen. But I made this a minor, so this won't affect the storyline here. This won't affect it. Okay, so all is good, all is good. Um, I accidentally kept them on screen, so ignore that. But this it won't affect the storyline here. Undertaker and The Rock. Well, you know, this should be high 90s. You got two of the best going at it. Let's hope. The Rock and Taker, please be good. 99. Can someone tell me how Mankind and Kane get 100, but Taker and Rock doesn't? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, maybe a stunt bump is all that was required. Maybe it was the, the, the Mankind just taking that crazy bump that got it over the line. Well, The Rock. Wow, The Rock, 95. Undertaker, 92. Undertaker, choke slammed. The Rock to pick up the victory. Paul Bearer interfering a little bit as well, just to make sure that it wasn't squeaky clean to protect The Rock that little bit. The Dead Man gets it done. Let's well, write the fake Inferno match. The fake Inferno match was the reason why we had a hundred rated. So we, well, if we had done an actual Inferno match, we would have got probably eighty. So the fake Inferno, right? Uh, I think we've got. Regal and Ultimate Warrior up next. Take your pick. How bad is this shit going to be? Honestly. Regal and Warrior. 
Well, look, William Regal might be able to carry. Let's hope. Warrior, short matches, short sharp, he's good. I think this will hit 74. I, actually, I can't believe I just said that. I'm gonna go 74, I'm going big. I believe in Ultimate Warrior. All right, let's have a look. Fucking 80, are you kidding me? 80? What? Warrior 67, Regal 74. William Regal wins the title thanks to distraction by Finley. Huh? <laughs> 80? Is Regal that good? Oh my god. Okay, I've seen it all now. Even WrestleMania can make Ultimate Warrior produce a good match. Just how good this show's going. Even Warrior's doing well. Alright, well is it a sign of what is to come? Next match is the big one. The main event. Oh no, I can't even look at it. I'm so worried about this. Steve, Austin, and Hulk Hogan. I, I have a sickening feeling it's going to suck. Um, I'm pretty sure we have a hype video before it, so I'll get your prediction to now. I'm pretty sure we've got one, but... Whew. Austin and Hogan. The dream match. The match we never got to see. Hogan, fresh off coming off being the WCW World Heavyweight Champion in its... When WCW was number one, Hogan left, he dropped the title, he left the company and joined us. He went and did a movie. He won the Royal Rumble in his first appearance, his first night back in the company, he won the Royal Rumble. He's joined the corporation now, he's Vince McMahon's boy, he's Vince's guy, and he's fighting Steve Austin for the belt. Austin, Hogan... Vince's old timer, the guy that got the job done back in the 80s and the early 90s, coming back to try and stop Steve Austin from running his company into the ground. Okay, the hype video doesn't matter. It's uh, it's minor, it doesn't matter. Again, I forgot to put them off screen. Doesn't matter. Won't affect the storyline heat. So, what do you guys think? 94, someone says 100. 92, okay. I did give it a slow build. God, I hope I did. Okay. Austin Hogan. My opinion. Austin will hit a 97 in the ring. Hogan, he's got 100 pop. Um, enough stamina now where he could be okay. We did cheat a little bit to give him a bit more stamina. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Hogan will hit 88. And I'm going to say this will be a 99 rated match. Okay. Austin and Hogan. Let's see it. Hulk Hogan comes back. First singles match. Bangs out a hundo. Yes. Yes, we did it. We did it, boys. Steve Austin, 94. He also took a stunt. It's the stump bump, apparently. The stump bump is the reason. Um, Hogan, 87. Austin took the bump. But in the end, Hulk Hogan dropped the leg. One, two, three. Hulk Hogan is the new world heavyweight champion. It was the stump bump, Baba. New champion. It's going to be a dark day in the WWF from now on because Vince McMahon has won. His man got it done. And they celebrated. McMahon and Hogan celebrate as they have officially taken over the WWF. They have got control of the company back from Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I don't know how Hulk Hogan put on a 100 rated match, but he did it. 45 year old Hulk Hogan has done it. The dream match. The match I have been waiting to see for a full year has actually delivered. I can't believe it. We actually made this thing work. I don't know, man. Well, do we, are we going to get 100? Nick Perra thinks it's the greatest man of all time. I, I think it's pretty damn good, too. Are we going to get 100 Raider for the show? We get 100 Raider for the show. That's all we have time for for this Total Extreme Wrestling here for the Attitude Era WrestleMania in the books. 
If you are watching on the YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a big one. It was a good show. So leave a like if you did and subscribe to see more.